Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be explaining another article about domain adaptation and we are using it for message passing graph neural networks. It's a kind of neural network, call it, we call it message passing GNN. And we use the technique of domain adaptation because we have some problem. We have a kind of domain shift problem. So this paper in 2023, which is also relevant to this paper. So cross network node classification, which aims to classify nodes in a label deficient target network by transforming the knowledge from a source network with abundant labels, draws increasing attention recently. Networks that model the relations between entities are ubiquitous in the real world, such as social networks, e-commerce networks, transportation networks, molecules networks, and biological networks. And node classification is a common graph machine learning task which aims to accurately classify unlabeled nodes in a network given a subset of labeled nodes. Uh, by the way, I have explained uh, some algorithm about graph neural networks in the folder of in the playlist of GNN. For example, graph sage method. I talked about node classification and many methods for that. But the idea of this paper is that we propose a domain adaptive message passing. So it integrates the GNN with conditional adversarial domain adaptation. So domain adaptation GNN is capable of learning informative representations for node classification that are also transferable across networks. Firstly, a GNN encoder is constructed by dual feature extractors to separate ego embedding learning from neighbor embedding learning so as to jointly capture common commonality and discrimination between connected nodes. Secondly, a labor propagation node classifier is proposed to refine each node's label prediction by combining its own prediction and its neighbor's prediction. So a label aware program propagation scheme is devised for the label source network to promote intra-class propagation while avoiding inter-class propagation, thus yielding label discriminative source embeddings. Thirdly, conditional adversarial domain adaptation is performed to take the neighborhood refined class label information into account during adversarial domain adaptation so that the class conditional distributions across network can, can be better matched. Iteratively, we add the target sample with high prediction confidence into the training set. Feature-based uh, domain adaptation algorithm have drawn attention recently, which can be categorized into two families, using statistical approaches and adversarial approaches. Of course, this approach is more uh, natural. So the family using uh, statistical approaches reduces domain shift by minimizing the statistical metrics which measure the distribution discrepancy between different domains, such as maximum mean discrepancy, conditional mean, uh, mean maximum mean discrepancy. But inspired by generative adversarial network, uh, a family of adversarial domain adaptation is developed to minimize domain shift by training generator and domain discriminator in an adversary. So there are many methods for domain adaptation. One of them is measures such as MMD. Uh, we call them distance measure. The other one is just like GAN, generative adversarial network. So it has adverse 
adversary, generative, and discriminative modules. And there are many mo modules, but these two are more uh, popular. I mean, 80% of the papers are about these two. And among these 80% 80 80 of papers, I can say 50% uh, are GANs, 50% are distance measures such as MMD. So it's around more than 200 uh, papers, but 60, 70 papers are very important about domain adaptation. And you know, domain adaptation is huge. We have multi-source domain adaptation, which is, of, which is a generalization of domain adaptation. Another kind of generalization of domain adaptation could be, for example, universal domain adaptation or a partial set domain adaptation. So there are many ways that you can work. And there is another a similar area, we call it domain generalization, which is, a, of course, a different view, different formulation, but very relevant to all of these ideas. So let's, let's get back to this, to this article. So this G denotes, so you know, nodes, edges, adjacency, a proximity matrix, we call it adjacency, and the attribute matrix X, and we have label Y. So AX is attribute vector, attribute matrix. And so these are the notations, for example, this, E sub i, it means final embedding of node V sub i. Or Y sub i is label vector of V sub i. So the proposed model is that uh, the first feature extractor is employed to learn ego embedding, hinging on each node's own attributes. So there is a good embedding. So to go beyond the limits of typical graph convolutional network, we construct a novel graph no neural network encoder with dual feature extractor, which is distinct from the GCN-like models. But instead of mixing each node's embedding with its neighbor's embedding, Dual feature extractors with different learner param parameters are adopted to separate ego embedding learning from neighbor embedding learning. The two feature extractors are both constructed by a multi-layer perceptron with the same layer setting. However, the input of the two feature extractor is different. As I said, this is just the first feature extractor. In addition, we propagate uh, feature, we, we perform feature propagation to aggregate the neighbor attributes of each node. And you know, n sub i is the aggregated neighbor attribute vector of v sub i. And this a i sub j is the topological proximity between the two nodes v i and v j which is measured by positive point. I think this paper is from China. Ah, oh, yes, it's from China. So there are some papers that, uh, uh, because you have a problem of local and global features in graph neural networks to have a better representation there are many approaches one of them is such approaches topological proximity and we have duality so so like before we have source network and target network but each one has different feature embedding feature embedding one feature embedding two even for target feature embedding one feature embedding two then we concatenate them here, we concatenate them for both source and target, but we have a feature propagation. And the rest of that is just 
that adversarial, that popular article in 2017 or 18, uh, 2017, that uses this general gradient reversal layer and uh, that conditional domain discriminator. So the rest of that is very standard. So we follow, we first follow, uh, we follow to compute aggregated transition probability matrix within K steps by assigning lower weights to more distant neighbors. Then the topological proximity between V sub i and V sub j is measured by PPMI. The second feature extractor, as I said, we have two feature extractor. Here you see feature extractor two, feature extractor one. So I'm talking about fe second feature extractor. It is employed to learn neighbor embedding, hinging on the aggregated neighbor attributes. Next, we follow the, uh, the formula, the deepest ego embedding uh, and deepest neighbor embedding and feed them to a single layer perceptron. And when two connected nodes of similar attributes, feature embedding one generates similar ego embeddings and feature embedding two generates similar neighbor embeddings. When two connected nodes have dissimilar attributes, feature embedding two still generates similar neighbor embeddings due to network connection. So this paper is very complicated. I mean, they can formulate it uh, easier, but I don't know why why it, it looks very complicated. And uh, but uh, most existing CNNC algorithm only focus on feature propagation, smoothing features of neighboring nodes. The prior label propagation algorithms aim to propagate the label probability distribution through the edges of the graph. Both graph neural network and labor propagation algorithm can be viewed as message passing algorithm on the graph. While with the, with the goal of feature smoothing, label is smoothing over the neighborhood respectively. So during label aggregation, higher weights are assigned to more closely connected neighbors. Uh, this is a very interesting part of this paper, very interesting. Uh, similar to label aware feature propagation, we modify nine by incorporating the label indicator for the fully labeled source network, which only allows label propagation from the same labeled neighbors and avoids label propagation from the neighbors have different labels. I think if they just use multi-source formulation, that would be more interesting. Because uh, the reader may get confused about these things. I understand this paper, but uh, the reader may see that it is, it is very, very uh, complex. Even for me, it's very hard to, to teach it. So this is the algorithm, but it's as simple as this. We just use the classical adversarial, that, that popular paper about domain adaptation that uses gradient reversal and conditional domain discriminator. But here we just separate locality in, in the global feature. So we have feature extractor one, feature extractor two both for source and target. And this feature propagation is a little bit uh, complex. I mean, the implementation is comp. The, the idea is very easy, but the implementation of feature propagation is uh, very, very complex.
So for each V, we learn ego embedding, neighbor embedding, and final embedding. Three embeddings. Then we compute uh, the loss based on, and then we compute another loss, loss of discriminator, and then we update the parameters using stochastic rate and descent. Finally, we have the predicted node labels as well as cross-network embeddings.